is. This is a, a solid model, a parasolid model. And the first area that we're going to extract is the area where these uh, ribs are. These are fairly deep um, and shallow ribs of the curving face, so quite difficult to machine. Um, so an obvious area to extract and burn an electrode from. Okay, so again, the context sensitive menu appears because we have a solid selected, and this aids me in the selection of the region that we wish to extract. Okay, so I can grow an area around the area where our electrode is to be, and you can see uh, that region is selected in orange. I can come to my uh, solid creation tools, and I'm going to use the uh, extract a solid core tool. So again, this is an area that we've improved uh, in PowerShape recently. Okay, so this gives me um, a box around the region that we have selected. I'm going to select the coordinate system and I'm going to slightly increase the box. I'm going to make this oversized uh, by two millimeters and I'll say OK. So what that does is it, it basically extracts a block from our solid shape. Now at the moment we have absolutely no runoffs, um, no gaps at all. So if I just draw that block on its own and flip this over, you can see exactly what we've extracted. Okay, it's like subtracting a block from the model that we have. Okay, so this is the basis of my uh, Electro design. Now I need to make some changes to this, and I'm going to use direct modeling to make these changes. So let me select a couple of faces on the model, and I now just want these ribs on their own. So I can come to my edit operations, and the edit operation I'll perform here is an offset. Okay, now I could enter a value in this offset field, or I could grab the drag handles. And what I'm going to do is just pull these selected faces below the bottom edge of the block. Okay, so what that will effectively do is force PowerShape just to extend all these ribs down to the bottom of the block. And you can see that in the blue preview. If I accept that preview, then uh, PowerShape calculates this um, operation, and we're left with just the ribs on their own, like so. Okay, so let me draw that on the solid model. So what we've got now is we've got this uh, rib shape as one solid, and we've got our original mold tool as a secondary solid. So I'm now going to I'm going to fire up the electrode wizard. So I've got my um, my initial electrode selected. I'm going to come to the wizards. And I'm going to fire up the electrode wizard. So Power Shape is now analysing the selection and it's asking me a question: Does my solid include the base? So in this case, no, it doesn't we need to add the base using the wizard. So the wizard process starts at the correct base, where we can specify the electrode blank. And PowerShape has filtered the library of electrode blanks that we have available, and it's only presenting me with the ones that are sensible for the, the size of electrode that we try to create. So I can either select one of the blanks from the list, or I can say, actually, I'm going to use a user-defined blank, or I can enter my own length, width, and height, like so. And I'll change the height of this so it's slightly thicker. I'm going to make that 10 millimeters, like so. Move forward in the wizard. So on this page, we can select um, from uh, a list of catalogs where we have Aroa, Hirschman, System 3R. And we're selecting the electrode holder. So I'm going to use an Aroa holder. And I'm going to select the holder that we're going to use to hold this electrode while it's being burned. And you can see now we have the model of that holder. Now this is not just so we can look at the holder, this is actually performing a collision check. Okay, so this will warn me if the holder collides with any part of the solid model, and it will allow me to, to see where the problem area is. So in this case, that holder is absolutely fine, no problems at all, so let's move forward in the wizard. I'm going to generate setup sheets, so I'm going to generate documentation for this. I'm going to have my new electrodes placed on level 50. Okay, uh, at this step of the wizard, I can, uh, I'm presented with some uh, default spark gaps. So here we're actually using some scripts, in this case an Agi script. So these are basically Agi recommended uh, gaps uh, that are automatically um, calculated at the point of this field. So I can either use those, or I can use save values, or use a defined value. So in this case, I'm going to change these to use defined values. So the rougher, 0.3. Semi finisher 0.2 and the finishing spark gap 0.1. Move forward in the process to the final step where we, I'm not going to use any of these options at the moment because we're going to uh, export the electrode after I've created the second one. So on this page I'll just say finish. Okay, a little bit of analysis is done and PowerShape is now building the documentation to accompany those electrodes. So what I'm going to get here is two 
uh, bits of additional uh, information. So first of all, we get a setup sheet. So this is giving us general information about the electrode itself. So the roughing, spark, uh, roughing uh, sparking gaps, semi-finishing gaps, finishing gaps, the material, the electrode name, where the model came from, the date, etc. The holder, and of course the physical uh, block size that this will be created from. So that's a setup sheet for the electrode itself. The second thing we get is a general assembly sheet. So this is showing me the origin, the location of uh, the, the centre of the, uh, the electrode. This is where it needs to be set on the machine. Okay, so we get a general assembly sheet. And of course, we also get the electrode itself. Now the electrode, I've got a couple of things I can do with that. So first of all, I could turn on burn area shading. So this will colour code the electrode for me. And it will show me red, yellow and green areas. Red being burn areas, green being the, the blank, uh, yellow with runoff areas. The other thing I could do here is another visual check. So I could ask for a simulation, which gives me this slider bar. And this lets me just simulate the extraction of the electrode, and again, we can just perform a visual check to make sure there's no collisions in our extraction orange. 